Welcome to Tales from a Trickster. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how long HEB is going to take to unload me, but I thought I'd share my training experience with you. It's about to get long and dirty. So, I get the okay to go with CFI, pick up my shit, I go to Joplin, Missouri. I get through orientation, and the uh, orientation guy said, sh we started at our training at CFI right before Christmas. I left. I ran away to Big Daddy CFI, and they told me, Sheila, everyone's going to go home for the holidays except you. Your trainer is so excited to train you, she's willing to work through the holidays. I said, kick ass, me too, fuck the holidays. Despite the fact that I went to go train with this crazy bitch, um, holidays are just a means to spend money, so I was, I was so down for this. I go back to the hotel, and they called me and said, hey, are you ready? I said, no, but I can get ready in about five minutes. They said, good, because your trainer's here. I said, okay. They picked us up, waited for me outside. Quick, she came quick. I was down for this. Picks me up, we go to take our COVID test. We pass, and you know how we all get a first impression? My first impression of this lady was, she looks sweet and old. She had salt and pepper hair, kind of long, you know, like, down here, salt and pepper, straight hair, glasses, short, and a big old ass. She had a beautiful body. Even though she was short, at my, she was beautiful. I'm not gay, but I was um, admiring her, her, her body. She picks me up, and I'm like, wow, she looks super sweet and old, and she has a nice ass. I wish I had an ass like that. I don't have an ass like that. I was going to say something else, but never mind. Some dudes have better asses than I do, which is not attractive, by the way. I don't know why guys think them having a big ass is attractive. No, it's not. <laughs> I like my men without a better ass than me. Anyways, that sweet old lady impression was very short-lived. She picks me up, okay? We go back to CFI. And these two guys that I'm assuming she knew because at this point my my mindset was like, I'm all in. I want, to, no matter wh what happens because I've heard horror stories in the past. My trainer, back in the day, uh, I was with Covenant Transport. He was kick-ass. He was awesome. This chick here, I was kind of worried about it because of all the horror stories. But they assured me she's a great trainer. I said, I'll, I'm, I'm all in, right? Let me make sure my... Okay. There was two guys at CFI that I'm assuming she knew. Because they invited her. One of the guys... They were very unattractive, by the way. Invited her and I to Texas Roadhouse to celebrate because one of them reached their one-year mark. Which is pretty exciting. So I was just... Tr I was following my trainer. That's what I was doing. She said, we're going to go celebrate with these two guys at Texas Roadhouse. Their one year mark. I think it was just one that was celebrating. The other one was just a friend. We go to Texas Roadhouse. And she makes me drive the bobtail. This is not part of our training. She just made me drive over there it's around the block we go around the block we go to texas roadhouse and we get off and they're ordering food you know everything's fine they gave off some creepy vibes right they're, they're not men that i would spend time with because of the creepy vibes we get out and there's no way in hell I ever gave off any type of flirtation. I was quiet the whole time and just listening. Them talk about trucking. I asked a few questions and we uh, finished celebrating, got out, and we went 
towards our trucks. Well, one of the guys decides to put his arm, I mean, get rid of my fat, decides to put his arm around my shoulders and when I don't feel comfortable and somebody tries to do that, I'm not nice about it. I will poke you in the eye, I'll scream, but I immediately grabbed his hand and I, con coraje we say, flipped him, pulled him off of my shoulder. Like that is not okay. That's the whole point I was trying to make is, this is not okay. Yanked him off of me. And as soon as I did that, the other guy takes his hand and slaps my trainer hard on the ass. Was A big old slap. And she didn't say shit. Oops, I forgot to... I put it... I ain't gonna do it twice. She didn't say shit. So I was... I was ready to leave. We get on the bobtail and we go back. I'm like, do you know those guys? She goes, um... Like they met, they've, that's like the second time they spoke. I was like, man, this bit already. I was like, why did you bring me here if you don't know these people, right? Oh, and she's missing her middle, the top of her middle finger. I don't know how she missed it. She said it was a forklift accident, but I'm questioning that after this whole experience. So the next day, we finally get in the truck and she explains to me that in three weeks time, that's how long the training was first week she's going to do everything and i'm going to be speculating i'm going to be looking at her watching her second week it's going to be half and half i'm going to be doing the computer she's going to be doing half you know mix third week i'm on my own she's going to be making me do everything and she's going to be uh critiquing me i was down for that so we get started and the first week never stopped. She, she, all I was basically doing was driving and she was constantly putting me on duty, uh, labeling my pre-trips. She was doing all the paperwork on the computer. I was beginning to be very worried about it around se the second week because I was not learning anything. And the whole time it, within that two week process, she was on the phone with her husband all the time and I kind of backlashed at that by turning the radio up very high to piss her off or to kind of hint to her like please get off your cell phone so you can listen to all of my annoying student questions right no what she ended up doing was um this is the straw that broke the camel's back okay and through this two-week process I caught her on my top bunk I went to like go pee and shit or whatever wash my face brush my teeth do all that i come back or i think i went to get something to eat something happened but i come back and when i open the door she her little fat ass was coming from the second bunk coming down and i was wondering why it kind of like worried me i didn't know i didn't catch her stealing anything i didn't catch her going through my stuff i caught her coming down from the bunk and i was wondering why the fuck is she up there but i didn't have no proof so already I'm thinking like, man, this bitch is kind of crazy, right? And then one time we had went to go do laundry. And when I was putting my laundry inside of the washing machine, she was looking inside to look at my clothes. I never catch myself doing that to her or to anybody. I never catch myself that curious about other people's. For one, they're dirty fucking laundry. And two, about anything. So I was like, this bitch is, like, like I said, I don't have proof that she's a weirdo, but I'm getting the, the vibes, right? So one day, that's what happened within that two week process. Now, the straw that broke the camel's back was when I went to go wash my face and brush my teeth. I come back and I tried to go on duty by myself and I was already on duty. And I said, D, I'm going to call her D. D, did you put me on duty? She goes, yes, because you have to be on duty a certain amount of time 
per DOT regulation. I said that's fine. But I'm not going to have you forever. The second week you said that I would be learning the majority of the uh, people net or the computer system. I said and I haven't done anything D. I told her I'm not going to have you forever. I would really appreciate it if you would let me do these types of things like going on duty doing the paperwork on the computer that way when i go out there otr on my own i am prepared that's it that's not exactly how i said it but that's about 90 percent accurate after i told her that our relationship our trainer student relationship completely went out the window she completely shut down on me the, the not, not one word came out of her mouth to me the tension grew in the truck she never got off her phone and when i would turn the radio up full blast bitch you're gonna talk to me and answer my stupid questions she pulled the fucking radio and then before my training even started she told me you're gonna they see if i has a zero tolerance with using your cell phone while driving zero tolerance okay they mentioned that in orientation they didn't really elaborate on that but when i was in my training with her she tells me you're gonna use your cell phone no matter what so it's okay if you do now i'm a student she's a trainer she's telling me this I didn't, what I was doing was checking out um, Trucker Path. I would like zoom in and out of maps. I was talking to Google. She recorded me and sent it to CFI. After all this ordeal was done, she tried to get me fired. And well, this I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's check this out. When she completely shut down on me, um, she was setting up an appointment on the phone quiet very quiet to get me to test out and i'm driving right and my mind is just going a million miles per hour i'm I'm thinking about everything i'm thinking about um, i'm nervous i'm scared all these thoughts were coming going through my mind and i could not communicate with this bitch because she was just so offended if i told her anything she would get offended so we make it to a loves and we get off i'm sorry on the way to the loves she tells me um on the 17th day it was like 14 15 16 17 day the last week i think no on day 17 because three weeks is 21 days right on the 17th day she was like um we're gonna set you up to go test out okay like real nice we're gonna go get you to test out okay i was like okay and when i said okay in the back of my mind i'm like man hell no fuck this are you ready so we stop at the loves and i'm having a hard time backing up a hard time the tension was so much it was just like i'm my hands in the air it was just a complete shit show finally parked my shit and i was just like i gotta call cfi i have to call cfi we go get some junk food i eat the junk food I said okay i'm gonna go take a shower and i'll talk to cfi then right i go talk to cfi and i tell them everything that's going on and i said listen she's trying to get me to test out i am not ready she has not shown me anything and they said we're gonna ask you one question do you feel safe and i in the back of my head i'm thinking okay well i want to say i don't feel safe because i really didn't there's so much tension in that truck i felt unsafe operating the vehicle one minute it, it it was too much it really really was and i was new i didn't know what the fuck i was doing so i said yes i feel unsafe at that point they said okay we're going to bring you back to headquarters but where I was, I was in Canton, Mississippi. Canton, Mississippi has no Uber. They have no taxi. They don't got shit. So I pack my shit. I get off. And I leave my cell phone in the truck. And I left my bag of junk food. Right? 
the leftover syringe. There was no trash can. Well, I didn't throw it away. She takes my cup of soda, leftovers, all my leftover trash. It wasn't even that big of a deal. With the cell phone on top and kicks it off the, the door. Here, take your trash too. She kicked it out. I was like, whatever. I'm just happy to get out of here, right? So I picked up my shit. I put my um, cell phone in my pocket. I go inside of the loves. Well, when I go inside of the loves, I'm waiting on a ride, right? No ride. I'm waiting on see if I uh, get me reimbursed or whatever. It gets worse. It gets worse. She has to come back to me and tell me uh, if I have a ride or not. See if I made her get off of her truck and come get me and see if I needed a ride because they wanted to make sure I was safe. Well, at that point, I asked a couple. She was completely trying to avoid doing that, right? And I didn't want to be in the truck with her anymore. So I paid somebody to give me a ride to the Greyhound. Or to the hotel, excuse me. So I pay these people to take me to the hotel. They take me. I get there. I had to pay somebody out of the city to come a... a, a oh, sh it was an independent contractor, right? Thank God they were doing that type of service. Over a hundred dollars to pick me up and take me to the Greyhound. At this point, I did not care. I just wanted to go back and get rid of this shit show, right? I go back to see if I go to the Greyhound. It takes me like two fucking three days to go back to see if I, I finally make it there, right? I'm tired. I just want to get this over with. I go to safety and they explain to me that using the cell phone, it, they have zero tolerance for it. They show me a video that she provided to CFI trying to get me fired of me using the cell phone, zooming out of the map and using Google to request some Tom Petty's greatest hits. And I say, listen, I am not the type to go against rules. I said she gave me permission to use my cell phone to tap myself to tap my cell phone to use it. I said if it was like zero tolerance, I wouldn't have never done that. If it, if it, if she was a good trainer, I wouldn't. She wouldn't be having it on video. She would notify me verbally. Basically, I didn't say any of that, but we're going through this conversation, right? So the last plea that I gave to them was, listen. All I wanted to do was come to CFI and start my career as a truck driver. Prepared to complete training the best way I possibly can. To become the best driver I possibly can. I said that's all I wanted out of this experience. I didn't ask for this. I don't think I deserve this. I said so do what you want. I said do what you want but I I'm telling you right now please I feel like I deserve a second chance they didn't say shit they just took me back to my hotel room the whole time I'm thinking I'm gonna get fired before I even start so the next day they call me early in the morning and they said uh, we need you back over here to see safety I said okay fine I was ready for whatever I was like fuck it I don't give a fuck about what happens and in the back of my head I'm just like man I wish I could get a hold of that bitch so I could just whoop her right I really wanted to just not not beat her up I would like to submit you I would like to take everything that I know and just lay it out on you that's what I was thinking the whole time Cause I, I sh it was bad right so I make it back to safety and they tell me that I'm going to take the um, CFI bus to another COVID test and there I'll meet my new trainer. When I met that guy, he was a army veteran. He had an army veteran hat. He had a, a pin shirt, right? I'm still kind of worried about this guy, but he was just night and day compared to her day one since we got in that truck 
it was just me 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 and he was guiding me through the process the way it should have been and i left completely prepared to go otr and some i mean that's all i ever wanted out of the experience was this guy was a trainer just like this guy so i thank cfi for doing that for me and i hope I'm the only student that this bitch did that to because holy moly there's some shitty trainers out there if that's the case. I don't know why they even made her a trainer there. But she don't deserve to be one. She don't deserve to be one. Hell no. There's no way in hell you can convince me that I was the problem. I don't think so. I did do some shady shit like turn up the radio but I wanted her attention so I could ask her all the questions that I needed. And every time I would ask her a question she would be like uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Terrible experience. So I just wanted to let you know what it was like for me coming out over in the road. It was bad, man. It was really, really bad. And to top it off, see if I made me pay for the bus ticket. So I paid fifty bucks to this person to take me to the hotel. I paid over a hundred bucks for another person to take me to the bus station and they made me pay for my ticket out of pocket they and they, do you know how they did that they took an advance out of my uh, paychecks and I had to pay it back shameful man shameful that's the way it was they probably thought that I was the problem but I really wasn't so that's what the way it was shit show man it was a complete shit show <sighs> i'm glad it's over and i bet i'm making more money than her and i ain't even gotta do what she i'm so mad